Hey, chemists. So uh, for Friday, and this is probably going to go up Thursday afternoon. So if you like, you could get a head start on this. Um, for Friday, you're actually going to have two things. You're going to have a discussion to participate in. And that's the purpose. The main purpose of this video is to explain that and give you an example of how I would expect that to look in the discussion. And um, to prepare for next week, you also want to watch this very short video, which is a, a biography of Robert Frost, who is the author of some of the poems that we'll be looking at next week um, in class related to Adams. So in uh, the unit two folder, we've got the discussions and I'll be making the other two uh, discussions for the other two groups after this. So this one's just an example. Um, maybe you picked up on the fact that these were all named for different James Bond actors. Um, I might change those at some point to winners of chemistry Nobel prizes, but um, you can of course read this, but uh, the big thing here is that well, we can come up with approximations like, oh, the mass number is usually about twice the atomic number um, or a little bit bigger than that. It's nice to know what actually exists. So the chart of the nuclides, I have one in class that I can show you well, that's on the wall as a poster. I have one that's a booklet as well. And the International Atomic Energy Agency also has one. Um, which is available online. Now, if you like, you can choose the three dots here. You can look at different properties of these nuclides. Uh, main decay mode is a common way of looking at this, and that's probably the default when you first click on the link. Um, I like the half-life just because um, you can see by color coding how long the half-lives are. All of the black squares on here are always stable isotopes. And that's also true on the main decay mode. So you should see overlap with those. And um, one of the really neat things with the half-lives here is that you can see that lead is the last element here that's considered to be stable, that has any stable isotopes. Bismuth 209 comes up a lot. And a lot of people um, used to say that it was stable. We still kind of treat it as though it is stable in high school and college chemistry because its half-life is so long, its half-life is two times 10 to the 19th years. So since a million years is 10 to the sixth, a billion is 10 to the ninth. This is actually basically 20 billion billion years for its half-life for bismuth 209. So uh, it's very difficult to measure half-lives that are that long. It's also somewhat difficult to measure half-lives that are very short but any of these squares here that you can click on, you can choose for this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna click on this one here, which I just centered, which is this 10124, okay? And when you click on an element here, whether you zoom in or not, you can see some information down here below it. Now, we don't need all of this information, but what we do want to know is we do want to know the atomic number, okay? And so if we see what 10 is, if we come over here, let me zoom out a little bit more. If we come over here to 10, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know you could click all the way over there actually, but if we come over here to 10, you can see that 10 has an atomic number of 50. And so that's what you would want to put down into your discussion. What's the atomic number and how do you know it? Okay. So you can also look on this nuclide symbol and you can see what the atomic number is. And it's always in the lower left. So any of those things or any other way that you know what it is, that's what you want to explain how you know. Of course, the mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons. So since the mass number is 124, for this tin nuclide, you want to explain how you could use that to, along with the atomic number of 50, to determine the number of neutrons. And even though for many of you, you're just going to be restating the same thing, you'll be doing it with a different nuclide, so it should be different math, okay? And then you want to give an example of an isobar, an isotope, or an isotone of your original nuclide, making sure you specify which example you're giving. 
Remember, I could also ask you for an example of an isomer, but isomers are a little bit trickier to determine. And um, even though this one is showing you some down here, these other three lines are isomers. Um, those are gonna be more of a special case kind of thing when we look at decays. So let me switch over to my document camera and um, show you what this would look like kind of as a discussion post. So switch the share window. So if I've chosen 10, 124, 10, 124, then I would want to say that that has 50 protons. Okay. And I'm not going to show you step two. I, again, I want you to think through that. What does this mean that 124 is the sum of the protons and neutrons? The big thing here would be isotope or isotone or isobar. Okay. So for these three, isotope, isotone, isobar. An isotope is going to have the same number of protons, isotope, iso meaning same, and the tope, we have a P there, so same protons. So an isotope would still be 10, okay, but it would have a different mass number. So 123, that's reasonable. We know there was a square next to the 10, 124, and I can show that to you when we get back to it, okay? Isotone would have the same number of neutrons. In this case, this one had 74 neutrons. And so let's say that we um, go from 10 to, and I know you won't be able to see this, but let's say we go from 10 to tellurium, which is two atomic numbers higher, 10 to tellurium. So tellurium, and if it has two more protons, but it still has the same number of neutrons, then the mass number should only go up by two. So tellurium 126 would be an isotone of 10, 124. An isobar, remember, has the same mass number. And so anything else with the same mass number as 10, 124 that is um, in the diagonal with 10 would work. So tellurium. 124 would be an isobar of 10. It's probably not the one I would necessarily have chosen. You could go for antimony 124, but if you are mousing over that on the chart of the nuclides, you will see that tellurium 124 actually does happen to be stable, but you don't have to choose a stable one. You also don't have to list all three of these. You only have to give one of these as an example, okay? To comment on someone's post, if you disagree and you don't think 10 has 50 protons, if you think they got it wrong for some reason, you would wanna say what you think it is and explain why you think that's the right answer. Explain um, your thought process when you, are po when you are replying to someone else's post, okay? If you disagree with the math that somebody did to find neutrons, explain that. If you disagree with what they gave as an example of an isotope, isotone, or an isobar, explain that, okay? But then you need to give one other example. So let's say somebody gave an example of an isotope. Well, then you're gonna to wanna to give an example of the isotone, or you're gonna to to give the example of the isobar, okay? Once there are two replies on an original post, the only reason that there should be more than those two replies is if as you're reading through, you think the people replying got something wrong as well. So um, if the original poster and the people replying, if they let a mistake get through, even after two other people looked at the original person's work, then you should feel free to comment and try to correct that so that we can fix any mistakes, okay? But um, this is the expectation for this Friday discussion. This should be pretty quick for you. It's just supposed to be a little bit of review again. Um, 
of these atomic symbols and of the math that goes into the atomic number and mass number and the protons and the neutrons, and also a review again of these three terms, isotope, isotone, and isobar. So I hope this is helpful. If you still have questions about that, again, remember you can catch me on WebEx at noon on Friday. Um, and um, you can also email me notes over Schoology or something like that. So otherwise, I will see you on Monday when we return to school face to face.